Uh, I'm not a native speaker, as probably you already hear. Hello, my name is Jakub Schindler and welcome to CNC Step-by-Step -step series where I show technology, operating and programming of CNC machines. Uh, this is the first and probably the last uh, video in English, but we had um, English speaking students in our headquarters in Warsaw, in our showroom. And I thought maybe you would like to see how our showroom works, uh, what machines do we have and everything that I showed the students at the, at the tour. So without further ado, let's go. Hello, my name is Jakub Schindler. Uh, my surname is unpronounceable for many of you, so just call me Kuba. Kuba is okay, you can call me by my name. Uh, I'm not a native speaker, as probably you already hear, so there will be some problem with communication. Probably if something is uh, not correct, if something is... If you're not sure what I'm, I'm talking about, just give me a call and tell me, say it again, use different words, I'll try. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Aplan Alp. Uh, we are a company that sells machines, basically. But our motto is we're not selling machines because machines are only the part of our, our company. Uh, we are selling complex solutions for uh, cutting business, for machining business. So tools, uh, coolants, uh, CAD CAM software, uh, all kinds of applications, uh, technology uh, help for the customer, service, uh, parts, everything you need to machine part you can buy from us and basically this is our main showroom in Warsaw but also we've got uh, centers in Rzeszów, in uh, Zabrze, in Elbląg, in Lubin mostly uh, in different parts of the of the Poland we've got uh, centers that like one quarter maybe of this of this showroom and we are showing like two or three machines on all of those so we, the customer can find us everywhere he wants to uh, basically, today uh, we prepared two uh, cutting uh, demos for you on Tornos machines and on Nakamura Tome machines. But before that, I would like to get a little tour with you uh, to the end of our showroom and talk about some of the machines we have here. Uh, we sell, of course, many other brands, but these are, these are like the, the most... Uh, they're, they're like the, the most quantity in our sales of those machines you can see today and uh, in the workshops in probably companies you will work in uh, these are the machines you will probably see someday maybe I think I hope so let's start the tour moment, moment, moment. Yep. so we're ready let's go to our first machine we'll talk about today this is a brand Nakamura Tome who could tell me what, can, what country is origin of Nakamura Tome? Japan. Japan, of course. Why? It sounds Japanese. Yeah, it sounds Japanese. Why? Because the end of Tome. Uh, in uh, Japan, uh, many surnames end with Tome, just like in Poland, many surnames end with Ski. We are Kowalski, Wisniewski. So Tome is kind of Polish Ski, like Son in uh, USA. Like, um, you know what I'm talking about. So, Nakamura Tome, this is a turning machine or this is a... Uh, the cycle is on? Why? Reset. Is it a turning machine or milling machine? Lathe or mill? Lathe. Lathe. Why? Yeah. So basically, difference between mill and lathe, milling machine and turning machine, is uh, the thing that rotates. If the tool rotates, we are talking about milling machine. If a workpiece rotates, we are talking about lathes. Uh, in many cases, many people think if the spindle is horizontal, it must be a lathe. But later I, I will show you, it's not like the, always uh, th this, kind of, this kind of way. So this is like the uh, simplest turning machine you can probably know. There is only one spindle, there is only one turret, there is only one tailstock. So it's easy to understand how it works, but also, most modern machines, just like this one, have something that we call live tooling. Live tooling means that we can install the uh, special tool holder to our turret and use it to uh, give rotation to the milling 
uh, tool, like the, the drill or the tap or the end mill itself, and do some milling work on our part. Um, the, the greatest benefit of this approach is that we can machine the part in only one setup. So we are putting the, the row blank uh, of, a, of a material into the machine, and you're getting the part that is turned, milled, drilled, tapped, maybe broach or something else, and the part is ready. You don't have to take it out and take it to the other machine and do something else with it. It's like one machine, one setup, and the part is ready to ship to your customer, to, to everybody who needs your parts. After that, we've got another Nakamura Tome. Uh, we are getting like, we are trying to change the, our, our uh, brand from only Haas machines, because Haas machines are mostly known, we are mostly known from Haas machines, to other, uh, to other uh, vendors. So, wow, door unlock. So this one is kind of similar, but this one has like another one piece. As you can see, we have no tail stock. There is no tail stock. There is other part, which is called sub spindle. Basically, if you have a row blank of material, let's say this is your, your row blank of material. This is machined, but let's, let's uh, say this is row. So if you turn the first piece of it, so you're chucking here and you're turning the first part, how do you rechuck it to cut the sphere on this part? Basically, on this machine, you have to manually get the part, rotate it, and insert it back. It takes time. It takes human, uh, human work. You need a person who's standing here and changing the part, the, the um, uh, orientation of the part, mi in mid-process. But if you have sub-spindle, you can do it automatically. After machining the first part, the sub-spindle just grabs the part, the main spindle releases it, and it's coming out. So you can turn the whole part in one setup. Not only the first side, but both sides simultaneously, not simultaneously, but in one operation. So once again, uh, one machine, one operation, the part is ready to be shipped, to be used in your construction, your machine, or anything else you would like to, you would like to use this part. This part is, I think, nothing to use because it's only like the demo part, but you know what I'm talking about, I think. Here we have Ibarnia. So this will be kind of a hard question. What do you think? What country is origin of Ibarmia machining? No, but uh, it's close, it's close. So it's Spain. Do, you ha do, do we have somebody from Spain here? Okay, so this machine is yours. You can be proud, really, you can be proud. Ibarmia is like in top three, uh, I think, maybe even the best. No, let's say top three, uh, to, to be perfectly clear. Top three uh, producers of CNC machines uh, in the Spain. In this uh, configuration, suddenly it's out of order right now, so I cannot open the doors to show you that. We have a spindle, which is located here, and the spindle can tilt. So now it's vertical, but it can, it can tilt to 105 degrees to the both sides to machine parts not only from the top, but also from the sides and from like kind of different angles, whatever you want. But also you have here a spinning table. So it's trunion turret configuration. Why do we call it like this? Trunion means the part can rotate on the table. Uh, this is the trunion part. And this is the, the tilt part, the spindle part. So with both of these uh, axes uh, turned, we have five axis machines because we have X, Y, and Z. These are, these are, these are linear axes, X, Y, and Z. And also axis B, which is, which is turning the, the spindle, and axis C, which is turning the table. Basically, if you uh, imagine like the, the dice, the dice to you know, play the, the games, simple D6 dice, you can machine five faces of these dice in one setup. There is only one setup, uh, one other setup, the second setup, to machine the, the left over one uh, side of these dice. So, yep. we will call multi-axis milling center. Yep. Not milling machine, but milling center. Yep. So basically, five axis is something that I love. I love five axis machines because uh, you can basically machine everything that is machinable on this one machine. If something is machinable on any machine, probably this machine will cover like the 95% of the parts you need to machine 
but uh, sadly uh, it's very pricey machine. This one basically doesn't give us price, I think. No, it doesn't. But it's like 250,000 euros. So it's kind of pricey uh, in terms of the machine, need, but it's kind of big. So we have Nakamura. Uh, yes, sorry? How is the, is the part attached to the table somehow? Yeah. So it doesn't slip? Yeah, basically you're using vices. In most cases you're using vices, uh, but also you can use uh, magnetic chucks to uh, use the magnetic field to hold the part. Also some kind of clamps. You can put the part and put some clamps with uh, screws to hold it down. But basically clamps uh, cannot give you the, the operational range you need in many cases. Uh, other, other options are uh, vacuum holders, of course. You can hold it with vacuum if it's not ferromagnetical to use a magnetic chuck. You can use uh, turning uh, chucks, so free jaw chucks also are used if your part is, uh, if your stock is round. And basically I think it's like, we cover like 90% of the work holding. The rest 10% are like special work holding for special operations. You can machine like the, the negative of your part to, you know, put it inside and uh, clamp it with some kind of screws from the side, but it's only used in like multi, uh, in like very high volume productions. If you have five parts to machine, you will use vice. But if you have like five million parts to machine, you can make your own work holding to make the work faster, to make the um, uh, operating of this work holding faster, and also to make it more secure, more rigid for your needs, for your application. So, Nakamura Tome, we've got like Kitamura here. Once again, Mura, Mura is the part of uh, Japanese uh, surnames. Basically, this is the uh, like 180, de 180 degrees different uh, from the Nakamura. It's also premium machine. It's like Mercedes or I don't know, maybe Audi in automotive world. But this is the milling machine, but the spindle is horizontal. This is not the common solution. In most cases, if you see milling machine, milling center, you've got your spindle vertical, just like on the Barmia. But in this case, you are using horizontal spindle. Why? What's the benefit of horizontal spindle? Do you know? Basically, there are three. Three main um, advantages of horizontal spindle rather than vertical. The first one, the spindle is very, very rigid because it's moving on some kind of uh, frame, right? There is uh, no problem with, you know, just sticking out and be really floppy about it because it's like the very, very long reach. It's always like on the machine right next to the frame. The other big benefit is easy of evacuation of the chips. If you are milling something, you're producing chips, right? So the chips are the, the pieces you're, you're cut off from the, from the part you're, you're making. And the chips in horizontal solution are just falling out because the gravitation, right? The gravitation is our friend this way. On vertical machines, if you are milling like the pocket, the chips can stuck inside the pocket and you have to use you know, compressed air or very high pressure coolant to flush them out from some kind, of, uh, some kind of pocket. So in this case, horizontal is better. But the greatest benefit of using horizontal milling center is that horizontal milling centers in most cases are also pallet centers. Pallet centers means, I just have to take it out from here, that here I can lock the door and machine my part. There's, let's imagine that there's already machining something like here, uh, something like that. But here I can go. You can come with me, I'll show you. But here we have second pallet. What does it mean? It means that right now I can rotate it to position I need. I should, okay, but we have some kind of problem. Ah, we haven't got the air, so I cannot rotate it. But basically I could rotate it, install my part, do everything I need with a setup. And when the machine is done with the machining on the part inside, it just swaps pallet. So then this part will be in the machining zone and I can take the ready part from the other pallet and install new stock to do new machining. So basically, if your cycle on the machine lasts, let's say two minutes. So two minutes is only cutting inside the machines. On standard machines like the Ibarnia, you have two minutes of cutting and like one minute to take the part out, flush the vise and install another part. But on this machine, those one minute of uh, operator's time is not needed because it's 
in the same time when the machine is running. So basically, once again, if you have like five parts to the machine, there is no need for this. But if you have like five million of machines, so if you're like producing something for, I don't know, maybe automotive industry, you know, there's a lot of cars, so a lot of parts uh, needs to be machined. This one is your friend. So basically the, the horizontal milling centers are like the best in this condition. There is nothing better for this. And also the pallet can rotate just like on the Barmia. So basically you have four axis milling center because you can access four sides, not the top one, but the four sides of a part. So if you are like uh, maybe some kind of um, welded structure to machine, to, you know, to, to prepare something on it after welding, you can do all four sides uh, on one machine in one operation. Once again, one operation and the part is ready. This is the best solution in many cases. So let's go there. Here we have another Nakamura Tome. As you can see, there is kind of Nakamura Tome world right now. Uh, basically, we are cutting right now, sadly. Mariusz, can we stop the process? I would like to open the doors to show what's inside of this one. So Mariusz will take a voice after that and will, he will talk you uh, more about the machining process on this machine. But before that, I would like to give you some few words more about the machine itself. Ref, ref. E open door. Okay, so on the first Nakamura machine, we had one spindle and one turret. It was easy, right? On the second Nakamura machine, we had one turret, but two spindles. So main spindle and sub spindle to produce part from both sides in one operation. But here we have something different. We have two turrets with two spindles. Why? What for? Because at first, on one spindle, on main spindle, you can machine with one turret and on sub spindle, at the same time, you can machine with the other turret. This is the first benefit. You are making like two parts in the same time. This is like two machines in one housing. But also, you can turn with both turrets on one spindle. Basically, if you have like two knives on the both uh, turrets, you can simultaneously turn two different diameters, two different features on the part on main spindle, and you can like uh, use the, the tool from the one uh, turret on both parts. So if you have like some, some very unusual groove with very unusual uh, profile, and you need a special tool to make it, you can use this tool on both main spindle and sub spindle if you need. So it's only one tool, for both operations, for both like machines, because as I said, these are like the separate machines in, in terms of uh, understanding. And also what is kind of sketchy, but th this is the only way. If you take a look at the program, you can see we have two programs. To properly machine part on this machine, you need to write and put into the machine two programs at the same time. And the one program will use one half of the machine, so one turret. And the other program will use second part, so second turret in this machine to machine your part. Basically to turn your part, but also as you can see there are some live tooling I think. We have some live tooling, yeah, this is live tooling and this is live tooling. So basically my friend Mariusz will show you probably some live tooling too. So Mariusz, can you take a voice? No, no, you have to start the part. So basically I will give you that. So, Mario is shy, sadly. Uh, you can uh, take a step closer to watch the, uh, the operation coming, but will you cut the new part or only the part this is already cut? Okay, so only the part that is already cut. So sadly we're left of stock probably. Uh, as you can see, on the mine turret, on the mine spindle, we, are, we have a simple cutting operation, now we have simple drilling. But on the other spindle, we have finishing cut from the other uh, side of the part. So this is the same part, but machined after the cutoff. Basically, the operations are kind of simple because still, this is only a lathe, nothing more. But um, the idea of uh, merging two lathes in one housing, uh, once again, uh, gets us closer to something I told you uh, when we are at the SC3002, uh, 302. Uh, we are machining part in one setup. This is 
kind of the, the, the understanding the, the, the way to produce parts right now because in old days we have like one operation to one, uh, to one machine. So we are like turning one diameter and then we get to the other machine to mill one slot and then we are getting to like the, the grinder to grind one OD for, I don't know, maybe the, the bushing or something like that. Right now we are trying to do everything automatically so we don't have to use like the five people to machine one part, five people and five machines. We need only one person and only one machine. And as you can see, uh, the machines right now are fully enclosed. So there's like no, uh, no hazard of, you know, uh, grabbing something, grabbing your clothes, making anything that could hurt you. You are like 100% invincible <laughs> for the machine right now. Uh, also the, the coolant, the cheap ejector, uh, like everything is fully secure so there is no way you could uh, run the machine with I don't know maybe doors open it's impossible machine will stop you if you try to do this uh, on the Nakamura Tome there is like another feature if you are inside the machine because you need to get in and do something which in this machine is kind of uh, un undoable because it's too small but there are also bigger machines you have even the, the lock to prevent you from closing the door because you are inside. If you are getting inside the machine, you have to turn the lock so nobody can, you know, just close the door and kill you with one push of button. Basically, this is more powerful than a gun because uh, it will not stop. It will catch you like, like butter. Uh, what else I can say about uh, WY100? Uh, why is it? Why is it Y in the name? <laughs> this is. This sounds silly, but the Y in the name states for the axis. In most cases, turning machines have two axes. This is Z-axis, which is the longitudinal uh, axis of the part, and there is X-axis, which is diameter. So if you are programming, let's say, Z minus 10, X 20, it means cut diameter 20 millimeters, 10 millimeters from the, from the face of the part. It's easy. But in this case, because it's Y machine, you also have the Y uh, axis. Basically, if you are milling something, just right now it's, it's uh, happening, it's drilling, I think, yeah, it's drilling on the main spindle. Uh, you can also mill something using the y-axis, which is, uh, you know, in Cartesian, uh, um, in Cartesian um, axis uh, understandment, it's x, z and y. And you can produce parts that are normally reserved for the milling centers. So this is turning and milling center at the same time. So, uh, some people call it uh, mill turn machines. This is like the, the quick explanation. But in most cases, the milling, uh, the milling uh, capabilities of this machine is way lower than the milling center itself. Because it's like mostly lathe, but sometimes only a little bit of, of milling machine. Okay, so we can leave a part. It can produce itself later on. And we can go to UMC. UMC stands for Universal Machining Center. Once again, this is like the big name. Uh, the, the company that produces this machine is Haas. Everybody knows Haas, I think. So what, what, uh, what's the country of origin? USA, of course. And I know it's kind of unusual, but this machine is really made in USA. Like if you are buying, I don't know, maybe you are buying like Chevrolet or something like that. It's not made in USA anymore because it's cheaper to make it everywhere else. But this machine is really from the USA. Uh, basically, we have another five axis machine, but in this configuration, this is trunion trunion configuration. What does it mean? We have no tilt in the spindle. Spindle is always vertical. There is no other way for the spindle to be, but you can turn the B axis and you can turn the C-axis. So once again, if you have a dice, the D-sex dice, you can machine six, par six uh, faces of this, of this dice in one operation, but also there is a trick. This machine has another trick in, in its leaf. Here you have a flat spot for another vice, so you can take the five-axis part from the main vice and put it here to machine the sixth side you need to machine. So if you have six sides to machine, it's possible on this one machine in two setups, of course, because there is a main setup, five axis setup on the table and six, uh, six, six, two, uh, six uh, face on the second setup 
on the side of the table. Uh, basically, Haas machines are like, let's say, something like uh, Skoda from Czech Republic, you know Skoda cars, of course. It's not the best machine on the market. Uh, the best machines are Nakamura Tomo and Kitamura, probably. Uh, but uh, they are like uh, price to possibilities uh, is very good. So they are uh, kind of mid-range price, but good enough for this price. And they are very, very common in Poland. Uh, we are selling like 200, 300, sometimes 400 of Haas machines each year only in Poland. And as a company, as Aplon Alp, we also have our uh, companies like umbrella companies on the eastern side, so Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia, and some other countries which I don't know how to, uh, how they name in English, sorry. <laughs> this is my problem. Okay, uh, we told about the big machines, the bigger machines, the small machines, but we have something really small right here. This is a Tornos. Tornos uh, is like, um, the, the name of this kind of machine is Swiss type late. So it's Swiss type. And who can produce better Swiss type lathes than Swiss themselves, right? Because in Switzerland they are making the best Swiss type lathes in the world and Tornos is like top of the top in my opinion. But Maciek knows more about this. Because we have two... We have two spindles and our spindles can move in the z-axis, yeah? And the tools which are inside the machine can move only in the x and the y axis. So, spindle is pushing material to the tool and we have the machine here. Yeah? Uh, inside, also we have the guide bush, so our process are rigid. So, thanks for the guide bush, we have small distance between a uh, guide bush, the collet in the guide bush and the tool. So, we have the rigid process. Uh, we can produce here very small parts something like this it's really small you can uh, Kuba showed us uh, show you uh, bigger parts and here uh, we have the GT26 and that the biggest diameter here is the 26 millimeter it's one inch uh, also we have here the bar feeder so we can put inside the three meters bars and run machine all day uh, because it's the machine for high volume production, yeah. So we write the program, yeah. Push the start button and everything's happened. So uh, it's very simple and I think it's good for high production. Uh, inside the machine, inside the machine we have two channels. Two, we have two channels, so everything moves in the same time, the right and the left uh, spindles move uh, move and everything happens. So, uh, first side and second side uh, is uh, machining in the same time. So, uh, uh, thanks for that. We can uh, show the cycle time and we have more production, more parts for, for our, our day. Um, and I think that's all for the machine. It's it sleepy, I know. Uh, sorry? Does it have exchangeable spindles? Exchangeable the stimulus, what does it mean? Uh, that you can change during machining the spindles. Uh, yeah, we can change them, uh, the spindles, but uh, first spindles work here, yeah, and the second spindles work here. So we have two gangs uh, and uh, two spindles work in the same time, yeah. So we have two channels to program and everything works uh, I don't know how to say, but you know, we'll, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, and uh, here, our process uh, looks like uh, we have the centering, we have the facing, all the turning and undercut in the first op. And the second op, we have the uh, facing, we have a little chamfering inside the hole. And here we have uh, small, small holes, it's 0 0.75 millimeter, so it's really small. A uh, small drill. Uh, we have uh, here the static tools and the live tools, so we can uh, drill or milling outside the center of our bar. Yeah, and I think that's all. Uh, and we can show the process. Yeah. 
So we have to close the door. We have, clo have to close the door. And on the Swiss, we don't have the G54. We don't have that. Uh, we have the initial cut. It's always the first operation. When we put the new bar inside the machine, the first operation is always the initial cut. And after that, all calculating uh, and all process goes in the loop. So everything's... So, okay. Uh, so we have first tool, our first tool is the cutter. So it will be the uh, initial cut. And after that will be centering, facing, OD turning, undercut, transfer. Yeah, because in the second spindle here, we have the parts inside, yeah, it's very small, but we have parts over there. And uh, these spindles came here and do the other things on the second, second side. So, okay. Um, we work here with the oil, so inside we don't look too much, yeah, but uh, purpose why why uh, why I use the oil it's uh, that's why um, because I uh, machining stainless stainless steel and I have to work with the oil yeah it's it's necessary to to do something with this uh, and okay so we have the oil it's the initial cut the first first stop on the main spindle now we have the reposition the spindle and centering and here we have the facing, centering and small drilling. After that our parts uh, eject or in the spindles, push the parts inside to the convoyer and our parts goes over there. So we don't uh, need too much to, to do these parts. Yeah? And here is the transfer. First parts go inside and lay down and everything works in the loop. So it's very simple and can work all day without our ourselves. So okay, I finish this loop and that will be finished. So okay, we have the drill. That's the parts go inside to the convoyer, transfer, and it works in the loop. That's okay. That's all. We finish our loop. Everything is oil, so be careful with put the head inside to the machine. And I think. For me, it's all you can go to the other machine, to the Haas, and check the Cobot with Krzysiek. Thanks, guys. Nie wstydzajcie głowy, bo może być tak, że będziecie stali w oleju i będzie słabo. The next person will be Christopher. Where is he? Christopher, here is he. The Christopher talks something about the phone. That's microphone. Jakub? Can you hear me? A little bit? Yeah? Okay. A collaborative arm, uh, like the robots. The simplest way to connect a Buddha is that using the relay with acknowledge for the machine only. As you can see, it's the simplest application. I can, It was only one day for that. So, I want to pick to device and back. How does it work? It is for the exchange the signals. The robot needs the permission from the machine. You know what I mean, I think. But the machine needs that permission for an acknowledge. Yeah. Is that right? Clear, I think. So, this is the signal. As you can see, I've got it right here. M52 is the signal from the machine that it's, as you can see, as an input, robot is 
moving back and it will be acknowledged with a time lapse as you can see no active anymore so machine can begin the the work as you can see the job to change the tool and it's only a simulation no any job as you can see and that's all using the relays and the signals only the simplest way and the cobot we don't need any fences for that because it's safe as you can see it's got one more function one dead man only and it works as I'd like to I can well with that to make the path by hand and through like that this is the uh, the biggest difference be between the collaborative robots and the normal ones the ordinary ones like our FANUC that's all I think thank you Christopher and um, on this uh, on this showroom we just showed you we have like milling centers turning centers but it's all cutting centers right we are cutting material with knives with uh, mills with drills you know what i'm talking about but uh, this is not the only way to machine parts there is also the edm which stands for electric great and wedm is of course Wire EDM. wow so great great uh, i wasn't i wasn't expecting that so the second part of our showroom is mostly edm machines so right now the rafao Rafa will show you something about the EDM, mostly Mitsubishi Electric, which is, which is also Japan. So as you can see, we have many Japanese machines, but not only Japanese. I think he know more about them than I do. Okay. Hello, I'm Rafa. Uh, we have uh, EDM machine, EDM uh, by uh, electrical discharge machine, you know. It's uh, the Japanese machining Mitsubishi MV1200R uh, uh, is the work, work table size 400 for 300 for 220 uh, we have automatic wire threading uh, the tool is the wire the copper uh, wire and we have the automatic threading we can cut it, the diameter of wire here is uh, 0 0.1 millimeter that's very thin uh, we can cut automatic cutting wire the wire is going to the uh, bin on the uh, back side and the, and the automatic threading insert. With 0 0.1 uh, millimeter diameter of wire, it sometimes has a problem with the automatic, but sometimes Okay. Uh, if we need uh, before the uh, process, we need to align the wire with the uh, gauge of align. We put the wire align gauge on the table and uh, take a. Uh, process of the wire alignment. After that, we can uh, do an operation with the program. With the program, we uh, need a drawing and need a, a parameter of, uh, of uh, discharge machining. We need to specify the diameter of wire in our uh, 0 0.1 millimeter workpiece material steel uh, copper and 
thickness of material. 0 0.035, 0 10, 20, for example, 20. And we have to uh, define the search method. Roughness or number of cuts. For example, we need the, uh, the very, very good roughness. 0, 0 0.3 or, uh, or less. We can uh, use the machining mode digital FS. It's very uh, accuracy and uh, needs to define we have uh, a die or punch. For example, punch 0 0.2, uh, the gap, uh, the nozzle gap. It's a nozzle. Uh, we need to, to uh, set the nozzle uh, close to the material. 0.2 is an optim optimum uh, value. And for uh, seven cuts, we can uh, reach the 0 0.15 uh, array micro micrometer and average speed was, will be 0 0.6032 millimeter by minute. Search epoch and we have number of epoch and offsets. Offset is the half of diameter of, uh, of wire and uh, discharge. Okay. Here, the dielectric is a water, uh, the deionized water. The uh, conduction of, uh, of water is approximately 16.4. Okay. It's the wire electrical discharge machining. Here we have the machine S SG12. It's a EDM machining. There we, we, we have uh, the, uh, the tool was the wire. Here the tool is the electrode. We can use the graphite electrode and copper electrode. For example, we have the Batman copper electrode, yes, and we need to insert in the spindle uh, the electrode and on the table we have the workpiece material. For example, we can steal and uh, the, the processing is in the oil lubrication. Uh, not in the not uh, not water like uh, in the wire EDM machining. Okay. Uh, and here we have the the uh, drilling uh, drilling erosion machine. Okay. It's the manual version of machine. We have the. We have the electrode. We need to only uh, only define of the uh, the diameter of the electrode, and needs to define the workpiece material. Uh, if we define uh, correct the uh, the diameter of electrode and uh, the workpiece material, the parameters of drilling change automatically. Okay, if we have correct truth, we, we can save. And if we have uh, water, or I don't know we have, okay, we can try. Okay. Uh, the coolant is... We can use this method of drilling. 
for uh, to, to do uh, uh, very small uh, holes, for example 0 0.1 uh, and uh, to the uh, high hardness material, for example 60, 60 uh, HRC. Okay, here we have the uh, value of x and y and that's it z axis okay not enough water try to end We can do a blind hole or uh, through the material. Okay. Is the end? Okay. Without coolant, it's a little hot. Okay. And you see it in. Uh, Approximately two minutes, we can drill a hole in the very hardness uh, hardness material. It's a kind of uh, 57 ARC. Okay. Uh, okay, and we have also the laser laser marking and laser welding machines. The producer of the machines is the Italian Sisma. Okay, here we have the machine to marking and eng engraving machine. We can uh, do the engraving, the texture, like here, like this. We can marking the color, for example. The marking is only on the plane. Uh, uh, surface or 3D engraving. We can set the STL model, and if uh, on on the other other levels, yeah. And in uh, machine we need to define define the head head high. For example, two go and we have the vision system we can scan and if we scan the mo we can we, we can take a uh, for example pass Nie, nie. To nie ma żadnego, to nie ma żadnego barwnika. To jest tutaj się steruje bardziej wiązką, wiązką samego lasera i, par, i parametrami, parametrami, czyli długością fali, długością fali. Tak. To, tutaj, to jest ten materiał się utlenia w, w, tym, w tym samym procesie poprzez zmianę długości fali, równy, do, równych do równych temperatur rozgrzewa się sam materiał i różne kolory można wydobyć. To można wydobyć niebieski, czerwony, pomarańczowy, różne, różne. Tutaj już... E, ok. And we have the welding, welding machine. Here 
we have the CNC welding. We can uh, do a program for the welding. We don't weld, weld uh, we can't uh, welding here because it's not uh, uh, security. Okay. We can uh, take do uh, welding with the spindle. Uh, the gas is the argon. We need to uh, take an argon to the spot. We need to uh, define the power of, uh, of welding, frequency and the spot diameter. Uh, and we, uh, we control by the joystick or the uh, or the program with the with the programming with the panel. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank all of you very much for joining us today. Uh, basically, this is the end of our tour. But uh, one quick uh, word after that: uh, if you speak Polish, some of you I know speak Polish also. Uh, we are uh, we are looking for uh, young and, and uh, agile minds to join our company, mostly for machine service end, so service tech engineer, but also many other, uh, many other jobs, also jobs in the office, also jobs in the application department, also jobs in the marketing department because I'm just a marketing guy, nothing, nothing fancy. So if you visit our site, www.abplanalp, abplanalp is unpronounceable for also me, as you see, .pl, you can find the Carriera link there, and there are like 15 or so um, options to, to uh, join our company. When, whenever you have time and, and you want to do this, you'll be welcome. Thank you very much once again, and I hope we'll see you somewhere in the future in some other shop machining something together. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope you learned something today. Uh, if you like this uh, video, you can always like, subscribe and share with your friends who also can learn something from this. Uh, if something was wrong, write down in the comment and I hope we'll see you, I see you in the next episode in next Friday.